Barnstable Little League players may soon be able to play on their very own mini Fenway Park. And we meet the new Youth Services Director at the Centerville Library on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. The Barnstable Little League hopes to add another baseball field behind the Barnstable Horace Mann Charter Public School. The field would be for young league players and would be a mini Fenway Park. Ed Pesci of Pesci Engineering presented plans to the Recreation Commission last night. The idea is to propose another field uh, designed specifically for the six to eight year olds, as you said, that target market that they're looking for, the farm league in the undeveloped area adjacent to the fields, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, as you've heard, the current program has an enrollment of over 450, and it looks like it's going to grow. Kind of a neat thing that we, we started working on and Joe has received, he has been given permission from the Red Sox to use the name Mini Fenway Cape Cod. So that he actually has something in writing from the Red Sox. We're actually getting another letter in writing so that we can show that to the school committee as well. Um, but it's a pretty cool thing. And it, obviously, they want to support youth baseball in the region as well. So the three project goals, and, and we'll wrap up, uh, to provide a fun mini Fenway environment to attract more kids to the great game of baseball. So as Joe said, there are things that, are, that, are, that they're competing with at the six to eight year old level, level for their time, video games, soccer, other things. And he'd like to show the kids, hey, this is, a, this is your field at, your, at that level. This is your field to play on. No one else gets to play here. And you'll get an opportunity to do that. So the, the intent is to provide a new field for that six to eight year old uh, group and to capture their interest in baseball. And finally, by having now three fields at that complex, um, they'll be able to play most of their league, league games in one location. And Joe described this to me, and I wanted to add this, that parents of multiple age players can actually be in one place now and watch all the games. So instead of having the six to eight, six to eight year olds in another part of town um, and the older kids at the current place, the current location. Um, this is an opportunity not for every single game, but certainly for most games where it'll be one location. So here's the um, layout that we currently have. So as you know, we have, a, we have an existing field that's been there for some years. Uh, the field we built um, this past year, finished this past year in the drainage system off to the side. And the new complex would be just to the, just towards the woods here uh, from the basketball courts that are here. So this is the mini Fenway. It's actually a regulation 50-foot baseline Little League field that we're able to... And the Recreation Commission voted unanimously to support the new mini Fenway Park. The request will next go before the Barnstable School Committee. The Centerville Library has a new Youth Services Director. Recently, we got a chance to talk with Lori Bottolino about her new role. We share that interview with you now. I'm here at the Centerville Library with the new children's librarian, uh, Lori Bottolino. Thank you so much for having us today. Oh, thanks for coming out. I always love being in the children's section because there are so many great books and so many wonderful things here for children. You recently took the position. When did you officially begin? Uh, August 24th. Wow. Yes. So a new position for me. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your background and what made you mm -hmm. want to come here to the Centerville Library. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a teacher by trade. So I taught for 10 years uh, in Barnstable and then a few years off Cape uh, after I got married and took 10 years off to stay home with my kids and wanted to do something working with children and families. But um, education had changed so much in terms of um, certifications and, and so much of the paperwork that I wanted to uh, have an impact on families without um, that burden for myself and my own family. Well, this seems like it's going to be a perfect fit for you then because so. you must have a lot of people coming in and sort of asking for your help and guidance yes. and uh, you're able to, to help them with that. Yeah. As my favorite part of the job, hook a kid with a book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And find something, sure. I think the challenge is to find something that a kid would want to read. 
Well, what's great about this position is that um, in school, um, and I was a school librarian for a couple of years um, when my kids, before I took this job <coughs> and after I finished staying home with them for 10, uh, in between I was a school librarian. And those library periods are 45 minutes and you have, you know, 15 kids and you really can't you know, get to know every child and find exactly what they're going to love. But when they come in here, you know, I have time to get to know them and find out what they've read that they've loved or haven't loved and tr really try to tap into the genre that um, works for them. And I love that. It's so cool. I think it was James Patterson maybe that said, uh, if a kid isn't reading, they're just reading the wrong book. Yes, I read that. I read that <laughs> yeah. quote. And I think it's true. Yeah, I think it's true. It's important to keep them excited. And you yeah. also have some programming here at the Centerville Library that helps keep kids engaged as well. Mm -hmm. So you have story times and some other programming. Yeah, we have something uh, every day of the week. So uh, Mondays, we have a drop-in story time um, that Jesse Sullivan, um, uh, the assistant children's librarian, runs. So that's at 1030. It's a drop-in. Any, anybody is welcome at any age. And then um, we have different events every afternoon. So there's Lego Club, there's a drawing club, um, and we're about to start um, having some teenagers come in and run board games in the afternoon for about an hour. Oh, um, how cool is that? That's yeah, a great idea. Yeah, it is. It's going to be fun, I think. And we also have a teenager and a a National Honor Society uh, senior at Barnesville High School who comes in and does a drop-in homework help um, on Thursday afternoons. And it's a great resource for parents who, um, you know, want to sort of let go of the book report and let someone else help out a little bit, study for spelling tests, things like that. The things that really can be tedious for families. Well, and, you know, speaking of tedious for families, the math help. I mean, I try yeah. and help as best I can, but yeah. really math has changed so much and right. requirements have changed, right. so the way it's taught. So that would be a huge help yeah. to our families. Yeah. I had no idea that you guys offered yeah. that And she works with kids in grades one through six and really understands that math. So she's a great person to come and see Thursday afternoons, 3.30 to 5. Wonderful. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, so cool. Do you have any um, things you want to accomplish while you're here at, at running uh, the children's program? Um, I think the thing that, uh, that is most important to me is to really connect with the community so that um, we can be the resource that you come to, that fam families come to for reading for pleasure or for school projects. Um, you know, we, we have lots of flexibility. We have, there's always me or Jesse here to help, and we really enjoy that part of the job. Yeah, I, I bet it must be fun because being a neighborhood library, I, I would think that you would get a lot of repeat customers and yeah. really start to get to know people who visit the library regularly. Yes, lots of familiar faces, lots yeah. of familiar faces, which is great. Um, have you noticed our story hour and uh, some of these programs during the weekdays, are they well attended? How many kids do you have participating? Yeah, we have um, our story hour, which is really a Centerville Library Institution, um, has been running for uh, at least 20 years. And that runs two days a week, two days a week, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, from 9.30 to about quarter to 11. And that is full on, Wednesday, on Thursdays. Wednesday, there is some availability. It's for three-year-olds uh, up till five, but not yet in kindergarten. Um, so it's a, it's a terrific program. Families really love it. Now, you said it's full. Do, do most of these programs require um, that you call in advance and sign up for a program before you attend? I would recommend that any program that you're interested in, call and ask. Um, drop in things like the drop in Monday um, story time, the drop in homework help, mm -hmm. drop in Lego club. Those just show up. But there are other programs. Um, we have a uh, on the half day coming up at the end of January in Barnstable. Uh, we have someone coming in to do a nature at night program, um, talking about nocturnal animals and, and uh, what happens at night in the animal kingdom. Those kind of programs um, usually require registration. So when in doubt, just give us a quick call and ask. Absolutely. Well, thank yeah. you so much for yeah, chatting with for us coming. today and yeah. telling us everything that's happening here at the Centerville Library, and uh, good luck in your new role. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Lori Bottolino is the children's librarian here at the Centerville Library. For Channel 18, I'm Sarah Mannell. We'll be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with Elizabeth Werfbane. She's the executive director of the Main Street Business Improvement District. We'll also chat with finance director Mark Milne. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.